going to talk about basic concepts in mechanics. What does the term work mean? What do we talk about when we're talking about power and energy and force and torque? Yeah, the commonly used words by engineers anyway these days. Um, but what do they actually mean in the real world? Yeah. Then we're going to talk about technical drawings. How to read one, how to look at it, why they are, what they are, what sort of projection they are, all that sort of stuff. Okay. And then the last session here, we're going to have a chat about friction. Okay. What it is, where it comes from, and how we overcome it. Okay. So. Force. Basic force okay, is measured as a Newton. Okay? A force is a push or pull on an object resulting from its interaction with another object. Okay? In other words, here, some object is pushing against this wall. Okay? Easiest way to handle it. And it's at an angle of 45 degrees in this case, five meters above the floor. Okay? The amount of that force is measured in newtons. Okay. So the equation force equals mass times acceleration. Okay. Sorry, what's happening here now is imagine that this wall is not fixed. Oh, come on. There. Imagine this wall is not fixed. By applying a force like this, if it's not fixed, you can move the wall in that direction. So, how fast it moves, and how fast it accelerates, and the weight of the wall will tell us the amount of force that needs to be used. Okay? So, force equals mass times acceleration, which just happens to be known as Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law says that acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater amount of force needed to accelerate the object. Okay. That's the equation for force. Now, work. Work is defined as an amount of force over a particular distance. All right, so when a body moves under the influence of a force, then work is done because we've taken a mass and we've moved it a certain distance. Okay? That unit of work is called the joule. All right. Now let's define energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Okay? Now energy is funny stuff. We can never create or destroy energy. All we can do is turn it into some other form of energy. Okay. Now, that may surprise you, but when you think about it, yeah, heat is an energy. So quite often what happens is when we when we use energy or when we use a force to do work, we expend energy. And when we expend that energy, it does two things for us. It does the mechanical work if you like that we ask it to, but it normally also creates heat. So what we've done there is we've converted a type of energy into a force, which is energy, and into heat, which is the other part of the energy that's been lost. So it can never be created or destroyed. We can merely change energy types. Okay. Two of the big energies are potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay. And quite often what we do is we convert one into the other one. Right, and the unit of energy is also a joule. Right. Potential energy is energy stored in a system. Typically due to its height, but also springs, um, pressure accumulators, chemical energy, in other words, the energy available in fuel, for instance. Okay? Heat energy. They, they, they can all be used to create work. Okay? By its height, what I mean is think about it. If I take a brick and hold it about 10 centimeters off the floor and drop it, what happens? It hits the floor and nothing too much happens, right? If I take that same brick and move it 20 meters off the floor and drop it, 
When it hits the floor, it's got an awful lot of energy to be released, and normally the brick would shatter into pieces and do a lot of damage to the floor. That's because the height gave that particular mass of that brick energy, potential energy, which then by releasing the brick, I convert it to kinetic energy because gravity caused the brick to fall and gave it speed. Right? So kinetic energy is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its motion. Right? A railway train doing 100 kilometers an hour down a railroad track has got an awful lot of kinetic energy. Okay? A feather falling from the bed doesn't have too much kinetic energy. So it's all about the size of the body and the speed of its movement. Okay. Right. So how do we work out potential energy? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me go back and talk about that one again still. Right. Others include springs. Think about it. When you push against a spring, okay, what happens when you let go? It bounces back, doesn't it? So if you hold the spring there, it's got potential energy. Okay. Same with pressure. Okay. If I have pressure on a bottle, Okay, like a Coca-Cola bottle. If you shake it, you increase the pressure inside it. What happens when you release the top? It sprays Coke everywhere. Okay, that energy, that's, that's the pressure energy that's been contained, and then as you release it, it turns this, it gives the Coke kinetic energy to move. Chemical energy, we use chemicals like fuel, petrols. We burn them to create heat, to create mechanical work. So we take chemical energy, we convert it to heat, and that heat we use to heat up gas to create a mechanical work in, a, in an engine, in a gas turbine, that sort of stuff, okay? So there's a different types of energy. One is potential energy. That's energy that has potential to cause work but hasn't been used yet. And kinetic energy is the energy we do to actually do work. All right? Now, potential energy in the system due to its position in the gravitational force field, all right? Obviously, it's mass yeah, times gravity. No, gravity is always the same. Gravity will accelerate you, any object, at 10 meters per second squared. So that's a fixed figure. Mass, obviously, is not a fixed figure. And Z is the height of the object above your data point. Data point being the Earth, um, being the top of a ship, the top of a building, whatever is where the, the object is going to land. The difference in height between the data, data point and the object is Z. And that's how we work out the potential energy. Kinetic energy, obviously the bigger the mass and the bigger the velocity, then we're going to get more energy into that object. So the formula for kinetic energy is half of the mass times the velocity squared. So if the velocity is zero, there is no kinetic energy. It's not moving. Kinetic means it has to be moving to have energy. Think of it. If something's coming towards you, how much energy does it take to stop it before it hits you? That's the amount of kinetic energy it will have in that object. Okay? Right. Now, we spoke about work as being the amount of force used to move an object a certain distance. Okay? But now we ask about power. Power now is the rate of doing work. It's how fast we move the object in a second. Okay? The faster we move the object, the more power we use. So power is the force times the average velocity. And the unit of power is what? And yes, it was changed after the engineer. Okay. So force times the average velocity is the power that's been used. Now, this is a slight difference. This is where a lot of people get confused when we're talking about car engines, is they mix up the difference between power and torque. Okay? Power is the amount of work done in a time, certain time. Torque is purely a force applied by means of a lever. Right? It's normally measured in newton meters, newton meters, or kilograms meters. 
kilogram force meters. Okay. In that case, this one here, if I've got 10 kilograms acting on the end of a one meter long spanner, right, that gives me 10 kilogram meters of, of torque. Right? In other words, the torque is the ability to spin something in the middle. Okay? So torque always causes a moment around a rotational center. Hence, we talk about torque on a car motor because the crankshaft in the car rotates and the amount of torque it produces okay, amount of, yeah, the amount of torque it produces will dictate how fast the engine accelerates okay. so quick question what's the equation for power? anybody? is it A, B, C or D? That's right. Power equals force times the average velocity. 